The IPCC has looked at many of the different climate models that are out there, and they've helped us to summarize all of these different models so that they can look at the overall um, agreement of the models and, and what's happening in our climate system. And so this is important to know because there are a number of different computer models out there that model the climate system, and they are used to predict how our climate will change in the future, and they're calibrated based on data from the past. And so they look at all the different factors, and they incorporate those into the model, and they look at how each one impacted um, climate, and did it cause an increase in temperature or decrease, did it cause increase in precipitation or a decrease, and so they look at these factors and they, they use those to what they call calibrate the model to make it fit. And then they use they can use these computer models as a predictive tool for the future. And so um, there are a number of different models out there, and you might hear about that on the news, and, and some argue that they don't agree. Um, these models, so I want to emphasize, these models do agree overwhelmingly what we expect to see. They are slightly different in the, in the amount of temperature increase we might expect to see, but it's a small difference overall. Um, they all show we expect to see increases in temperature over time in the next 100, 200 years. They all show a fairly large increase in temperature, and they all show that that's, it is increased in temperature is predominantly being driven by the amount of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So um, this, this chart here is showing the amount of, of increase in the amount of um, what they call radiative forcing or the amount of heat that's stored on Earth over time. And so there, this, this chart is showing that the largest contributing factor to global increases in temperature is the emission of greenhouse gases. So that's these bars at the top of the chart. So these are by far the largest driving force for temperature increase. There are natural contributions that we see to temperature change, um, things such as volcanic aerosols. So when a volcano, volcano erupts, it sends a bunch of ash into the atmosphere, which actually blocks out the sun and decreases the amount of heat coming into Earth. And then um, we see changes in solar irradiance, um, depending on sunspots and um, all the different the wobble of the Earth and, and some of Milankovitch's observations. So uh, we do incorporate those into the model, but they're very small contributions compared to greenhouse gases, which are the big changes. And then there's some short-lived gases and aerosols that we put out, and they cause kind of the different ones cause different effects. So like I said, if it's like a, a dust or carbon, something in the atmosphere that can help block out sun, that's going to cause a decrease in the amount of solar energy that reaches Earth. Um, and then it, if it's, I'm sorry, the black carbon causes an increase, nitrates, some of these cause a decrease, sulfates, mineral dust cause decreases um, because they're able to block out some of the sun. And then, of course, we see that clouds, so clouds are being impacted by aerosols that are going into the air, and that also changes uh, the amount of uh, solar radiation that reaches the Earth's uh, surface. And then finally, there's um, when we have a change in land use, that changes the albedo of the land, so the reflective properties of land and how much um, heat is being absorbed by Earth's surface. But the take home message here is that overwhelmingly, the amount of heat being stored on Earth is predominantly driven by the amount of greenhouse gases that we're seeing in our atmosphere. And this, is, this can be said with a very high level of confidence based on many, many different models that are out there.